Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now the All Ordinaries Index finally broke through its all-time high and is looking strong. Stay tuned as we'll discuss our thoughts on the Australian market shortly. For the main event in tonight's show, we get into a great topic and that is how to retire early. And we share our top five stocks to help you do just that. First up, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax. Tonight is jam packed as we have lots of emails to answer. We'll also take your phone calls and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the market. Tonight, we're excited to share our thoughts on some great stocks like AZJ, MEZ, AGL and Woodside, the All Lords Index and more. So get comfortable as we'll get into those soon. I'm Dal Gillam and I'm your host for tonight and joining me are two of our team of highly experienced analysts and professional traders, Janine Cox and Philip Tovtesky. And together, we are Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Good evening, Phil and Janine. How are you today? Good, Good evening. evening. Thank you for that. Phil, you're looking extremely You've, handsome uh, tonight. I, I've, um, I love tie. your tie. It's the first time I've done a Windsor tie. Winston. Is it a Winston? <laughs> <laughs> Windsor <laughs> knot. Windsor, <laughs> Windsor knot. Yeah, yeah, they all taught me how to do one yeah. day. So. I what took him reckon? out of his schoolboy tie yeah. and put him into a Windsor tie. That's fantastic. Windsor knot. So it's a lot more complicated. just want to but... raise the bar a little bit here. You always yeah. look awesome as normal. Thank you. I'm really particularly mm. excited at the moment. We're out of reporting season, but wasn't that a rocketing reporting season it was it mm. was quite and we're going to talk about that about that tonight yep. obviously the all lords breaking the all-time high we're going to talk a bit about that tonight as we get into the all Lord news index but tonight as mentioned we are getting into the all Lord news index but first let's take a look at this week's hot stock tip now phil what have you got for us tonight well tonight the hot stock tip is washington h sol Pattinson, asx code sol so let's get straight into it on your screen right now is marketindex.com and if we begin with the summary of Washington you'll see that this company has evolved from owning and operating pharmacies initially to diversifying yeah. investments um, across a range of industries including equities uh, credit property they've also um, the company's never missed a dividend payment which I found That's very very nice interesting enough. considering it's been around since 1985 or thereabouts, um, saying that it, uh, since 1903, it's been delivering increased dividends every year since 2000. 1903. Yes. Wow, that's a long since time. Listing in, since listing in 1903. Listing in, that's a long time. Very isn't long it? time, yes. I know that stock was really tightly held a long time by a big f family. Yeah. And that's why it wasn't a lot of a liquidity yeah. for a long period of when time. When we get to the chart, now. we'll see that, yeah, it's, it's, mm. it goes back to 1985. So yeah. um, we'll get to the chart in a second, but some metrics on this one. It's It's got a one year mm. performance of 21%. Year to date, it's up 6.3, um, which is not too bad. The market cap is 12 billion, 12 and a half billion, and, and it is ranked in the top 50. So one of the more liquid, wow. higher cap stocks, which is a little strange for me, but. Um, Look, we, we go. Why is it strange? We go because I like to play on the outskirts <laughs> a little, but, but, but we go across the board. So, look, let's bring up the chart. And what we have here is obviously the monthly chart on the left, weekly chart on the right. If we start on the monthly chart, you'll see that I've, mm -hmm. I've actually marked up, um, and I've said marking Janine, so don't hit me, please. <laughs> um, but I've marked up a few areas in rectangles. Now, I wanted to mark these levels up initially because this stock, you can see how what I uh, initially caught my attention um, actually is the fact that this stock has changed its characteristics somewhat. It's been a stock since around 2003 that has shown to move in these choppy periods, albeit moving up in an uptrend. But you see since March 2018, the moves have become much more um, volatile for one, but also trendy. Um, and that's really important mm. when you're trading because as we know, and a lot of our students out there that, that do trade and have rules and techniques to trade, these rules are much more applicable and work much, much better in clean markets, trendy markets. Mm. So um, for that, I really like this stock. And it's one of those stocks, we were talking about it last week, that um, it's the golden scenario where you can find a stock that provides you fantastic growth and giving you income. So this is one of those stocks that, you know, since listing has just made higher highs all the way through, um, what have we got, 1985, and going all the way high, making higher highs, and paying a dividend all the way through. I've also got, just to 
um, add a little more those black horizontal lines in there. If you're wondering what they are, they're just previous uh, levels where, where the market was at an all-time high. And what I've, um, why I've put them there is to show you that each time the market breaks through that all-time high, it likes to come back and touch into that previous all-time high before making its next run up. And we've seen it happen here in April 2010. It broke up, came back in, again breaking up uh, the May 2017 all-time high, coming back in, breaking through the October 18 high, now coming back in and looks as though to me we're moving in that nice little uptrend, heading back towards that all-time high. I've also added a trend line to see that the stock's really respecting that in its most recent run. So all signs are pointing to further upside for this one. Sounds exciting to me. Mm. Definitely. Well, that is it for our weekly hot stock tip. Now, shortly we'll get into our topic for the night. But before we do, right now is your opportunity to get involved in the show and have your questions answered. Now, remember, we prioritise phone callers. So call now on 039290-9988. Or you can text your question to the number on your screen. Now, the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy of my book, Accelerate Your Wealth. So pick up your phone and dial 03 9290-9988. Now, while you do that, tonight we'll give you our thoughts on the Australian stock market, so let's get into that. Now, Janine, you've got that, haven't you? Yes, on your screen right now is the chart of the All Ordinaries Index. Let's go and take a look. Now, we can see that I've got the weekly chart up, which may surprise you because, you, you know, I'm a stickler for process and I would usually go to the monthly chart and some of the students will be saying, hey, you can't cut it short and go to the weekly chart. But that's what it, I'm going to be a bit of a rebel tonight. So you're in charge of the mouse. I like, I like, so this. I like <laughs> rebel. Okay, so mm. if we look at what the recent rise that we've seen on our market now, it's that first push up's about 12 or 13 percent, and we're and I was talking to one of our our head assessor actually um, yep, Emma. this today, and she was so our excited. Awesome head assessor. Yes, she is, and she was mm. so excited that it actually stayed at an all-time high, like the market was hovering around that all-time mm. high, which is good. But we are expecting that there should be a peak sometime time around April, um, which you've been talking about in your report. Yeah, sort of late March, mm -hmm. maybe yes. early April, we're talking yeah. about, yeah. Yep. Um, but looking at that, I'm just interested to see that every time we see that sort of a rise occur on the market, I'm not just going to, I'm not going to count the COVID low, but you see, you get these sort of 12 to 15% rises on the market. But then after that, what the market does is it tends to sort of just try to push up a bit higher. So there's about 15% off there. And we've got this other one here. So we're still expecting there could be a bit of a move up. So even if you've got 14% up and, and even out of this low here, well, we had that big pullback in December 2018. We got a nice rise out of that low there before it sort of consolidated about 15%, but it still went on after that. So I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to see a sort of a repeat of that. Um, occur and you know maybe it'll try and push in before we get this correction that you're alluding to is coming up but at the moment if you were just looking at that and you didn't know the other things that you know then mm. you'd think it's bullish wouldn't you? Oh it is bullish mm. that's the thing is and I mean you know mm. to me the, the market goes up in stairs and down in elevators and at the moment we're just going to go up in stairs mm. but uh, you know we're thinking that the next two to four weeks is bullish probably more like three to four weeks, possibly a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. We'll have a peak and then we'll come down. And yesterday on our market report that Phil and I did uh, for TalkingWealth.com um, subscribers, I'll see our full review on that. Phil mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time on the Allords yesterday. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, we're just expecting a bit of a pullback. And we give you our price projections for that pullback as well, but I'm not going to tell everybody on it. You have to watch the video that Phil and I did. But I think the market's bullish. I love it at the moment. That's what I think. Mm. Did you want to add anything, Phil? Oh, look, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, go and watch the report if, if you haven't, because mm. we, we do dig in a lot more and, and um, really get into the nitty gritty of those levels where we do think it's going to go to. So please We also go. found three hot stocks that are, they're going to do 30, 40, 50% this year, those stocks oh, we yeah. found. Mm, I was so excited when I looked at them, but check out the video anyway. But that is it for our thoughts on the Australian market. Now, before we get into the first email, remember to get your questions answered live on air. You will need to text or call into the show. Now, you can also send your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au and we'll answer them in next week's show. Now, let's get into our first email question. Our first email is from Sumit who says, Hi Dale, Janine and Phil. Hope you are doing well. I am currently pursuing the diploma course 
and am currently in module three. I must say that it has been a great experience so far, especially with the student support. For tonight's show, would it be possible to provide your analysis on Horizon Holding? I currently don't own the stock, but would like to know your expert opinion on it. If there would be any buying opportunity soon, thanks, Samit. Now, he's talking about Emma and her fantastic support team of assessors. Aren't We've got they? amazing assessors. Mm. Well, probably they're not as good as when Phil was on the team. I was about to say, I'm <laughs> sitting here. <laughs> Sorry, Horizon Phil. Holdings, what do you reckon? <laughs> All right. Um, look, I think it looks fantastic, just this, this consolidation that we're seeing in here. and we, We've got this low, and I always like to see these sort of little patterns unfold just as a test of the low. So in, that was in December 2021 on the monthly chart, and then February 2023, we're, we've seen another one more recently in October 2023, and this push-up didn't quite make it. There's a lot of resistance there, so if we just put a horizontal line across here, you can see that there's you know significant resistance around this level, these levels here. But I think he's on to something. So look, good on you. I, I actually like it myself, um, but it's looking a little bit stretched at the moment. It's got to get through that high in February before we know where it's going. But you're on the right track. You want to follow stocks that are potentially down, consolidating, and then have the potential so to So you're go saying up. there's no buy at this particular time? Not on at this, this stock, particular time. But he's on the right track. He's on the right track. Anything you want to add, Phil? Look, I'm going to say, given where the stock is, I mean, if we go back to the chart, um, given the stock's I mean, well below half of its um, all-time range and trading in that bottom third. I'd say that because of the potential upside back to where this stock used to trade at, that there is potential to trade at this level. Now, in terms of trading rules, he's going to have to come up with that and he's doing the diploma, which is great. Well, he's, on my, he's doing Module 3 right module now, three, but I think yeah. Module 4 is going to help him a lot by the sounds of it. How oh. exciting that he's actually mm. on Module 3 mm. and he's actually already thinking about the stocks and the, his watch list for his portfolio. Oh, I just look, think, I think that's it's fantastic. Because you know. when, they, when they get to Module 4, they're getting, you're encouraged to do that and you get the support service to help you do with your own trading. But to be doing that already on Module 3, as he goes through and he's doing all the exercises, mm. he'll be able to apply well, it to I'm, stocks like this. When I'm mentoring this. students from Module one, I say pick 10 stocks, yep. and mm. as you're going through each module, apply what you're learning onto those 10 mm. stocks. So by the time you get to the fifth module, you already know those stocks backwards, and you've got 10 stocks to trade straight away mm. that you already know exactly what they're going to do. Best way to start trading. Yeah, so that's, that's a great, great idea. Yeah. Mm. So at the moment, too early for Samit to get into it. No buy signals yet. Yep. On the right track. Yep. Correct. Anything yep. else you want to say? Oh, I, no, the, well, I mean, he'd know from yep. module three that a few weeks ago, if he just looks on February 16, there was a potential buy signal, but that's up to him to go and that's do a bit of work. That's up to him anyway, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have an email from Matthew who says, hi team, as an investor in Iperionics, I think that's how you say it, I wonder when the market will become more aware of this company that will be receiving a lot of funding from the US government to produce and sell titanium to the US government as they prepare to rebuild their supply chains away from Russia and China. Now the company has forecast very recently to the ASX large US dollar profits from the next financial year, almost as high as their current market cap, Matthew. So what do you got to say about that one, Phil? Look, I think that the market's onto this one already, already. unfortunately for Matthew. It's, um, if we go to the chart, it's gone up, you know, since these lows in July 2022, it's already gone up over 250%. Um, of recent price action and it is expanding. If we look on the, on the monthly chart here, you're seeing the bars actually get larger in length. So it's not telling me that it wants to slow down at all. And, and we do see stocks when they do break to their all time highs that it is possible for them to slow down. Now, obviously March has just started, so you, we can't take too much from the first couple of days if you're looking at this bar and thinking, you know, it could be a reversal. Um, but that being said, it, it is expanding in terms of buying it right now, I would say, uh, given it is stretched, I, I would wait for a better opportunity. Mm. Like, you know, we've been seeing this theme happen over the last how many how many weeks with yeah, the market running weeks, yeah. through a reporting period and, and these kind of stocks coming coming in, people saying, oh, should I buy now? So I'm not saying that there is any FOMO going on, but potentially if there is, um, just know that there's going to be another opportunity and, and now's a good time to work on a strategy to um, find a, a better opportunity because it will come again. It's yeah, I really know interesting. We, sorry, I'm just going to say, mm. I know... He's saying, you know, when will they catch up to the news? But what happens is, is for Matthew, is that they're already caught up with it because the big mm. institutions and the big players, they're buying for two and three years out. So they're already 
in on it already. So yeah, yeah they would the know that the government money. was going to be doing that. It's Correct. Someone would have heard about that. And, they would have already known about that That's what I was anyway. just going to talk about mm. because if we look at the chart here, um, just seeing if I can find a vertical line here. I don't have one at the moment, but I'll get the cross here and put that out. Um, see that, that spike volume there? And you can see that steady rise. That's to me is when they already knew about it because mm. you can see this big move up here in June. Um, that was 2023. And that went through that all time high at the time. But what I wanted to share with him is what he's actually um, found is a stock that is r so interesting to me from the point of view of this consolidation. So you can see this little move. If you find stocks that do this sort of thing, um, that's what you want to look for because that was a sort of a telltale sign of mm. when the safer run was there. Mm. Especially where it's positioned, they're, they're accumulating it at the all-time high. So it's telling you that yeah. there's going to be potentially another big run from that level. Mm. How often do exactly. we see interesting. like a stock take off and then two weeks later or three weeks later or four weeks later, you get this announcement that explains oh, it. So often. Whether it's a takeover bid, whether it's some other thing like a contract or whatever else, and you think, and then there's it takes no off. such thing as <laughs> yeah. insider trading, is no, there? No, no. And then it yeah. takes yeah. off even more. So the people who actually bought it when it first took off, they're, they're selling the ones it. Making money. And they're mm. the ones in the know and they're making the money and mm. the retail traders are getting left with whatever's left over. Yep. So don't you worry about it, Matthew. Um, I think the big entertainer are already onto this stock. If you do want to talk to us, remember the phone number is 03 for Melbourne, 92909988. We're looking forward to your call. I know Janine's waiting for, to chat somebody, to somebody, sorry. So pick up your phone right now and ring 03 Now our next question, which is from Jim, he says, Hi all, I've noticed Capricorn Metals starting to poke its head out after trending sideways for about 12 months. Um, I've made some small, solid returns on it from August 2021 and I'm considering buying back in if it holds above $5. Keen to hear your thoughts on it for the medium term. Thanks, Jim. What do you reckon? Yeah, look, it's, um, he, he's right in a sense. I mean, if we go to the chart here, you'll see on the weekly chart mm -hmm. that it has broken a downtrend line on the weekly mm -hmm. chart, which um, is a positive sign. There, there's volume coming in as well. We said that large volume coming in on the 23rd of Feb. So it's doing the, I would say, the first things you would like to see a stock do uh, in terms of reversing and, and providing it with potential. Now, the fact that it had been falling for um, since April 23 for almost what are we, almost, well over a year. Um, and if we focus here in this particular area where my mouse cursor is, you'll see that there was some heavy selling around this level. So it still needs to do uh, quite a bit more for mine um, to, to get super excited. But it is at, if we mark a horizontal line here, it is also at a level of, of potential support. Um, so it's, it's starting to do the right things. But as we know, when stocks hit these major reversal points, We'd like to see him do a little bit more because there can be that accumulatory type of um, price action where it can, you know, zip up and down a few times. So, mm -hmm. um, good choice. Uh, just probably be a bit patient. So, so Janine, let me ask you. He's, he said he's made money on it in 2021, mm -hmm. which means he's bought and sold it. Mm -hmm. So, is this a case of I've traded money, I've traded this stock, I love it, I've fallen in love with the stock, so now I can trade it again to make the same sort of money again? Is do you think it's this sort of case? That can happen. However, yeah. it's good to actually stick with the same stock so that you really get to know them. So I actually think yeah. it's a good idea to good be idea. trading in and out of stocks like this. Ah, mm. I just try, I just get in, get out, and then go to the next one. <laughs> like <laughs> like, I, it's, sometimes I'll trade a stock multiple times, and other ones I might not trade one for five years or whatever else and go on to the next one. But you know, it can mm. be much better knowing a stock backwards. So right now, it's mm. way too early you're talking about, Phil? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just one look at the chart will tell you that yeah. it's got a lot more to do before you can yeah. be super confident. Any last words from Janine? I know you like them. Ah, uh, look, I mean, I really like the fact that it's just trended down like it has, like Phil was saying before, mm. a little bit more of a pullback. And, you know, we could see a nice little entry there, as he said. But in the short term, there's another line across here, which I was just keeping an eye on. Um, it seems to have hit its head there. You know, how hot far it's going to go. It's got to get through a dollar for me because that's always a psychological resistance level. Yep. Mm. All right. Well, that is it on our take on TLG. Now, each and every week we get people visiting our site wanting help to make more money so they can get ahead or retire early. And so for tonight's topic, we will show you how you can generate more income. Now, to do that, it's really not as hard as you might think. The important thing is that you invest in the right sectors. 
as doing this can really accelerate your goal of making more money. Now, one sector we've talked about a few times on this show that I really like right now is energy. So stay tuned as we'll get into how you can create a strategy for generating income using the best energy stocks. But before we get into the stocks, uh, which stocks are best for generating income, I wanna chat first about the cost of living. Now, firstly, it's no secret that the rising cost of living is eating away uh, your ability to get ahead. And we know historically, it is families that feel the most. Now, Janine, you are our super sleuth. So let me ask you, is this still the case today? I should have my magnifying glass, shouldn't I? And the hat. Um, the hat yeah, and too. the hat. I did have a bit of a look at this, and an article on the ABC showed around half of all families say their finances are worse off than a year ago. And the graph shows that we're back to GFC levels. Well, that, that then leads us to a question, and that is if you all, all you have to do is enough to pay the bills. If all you've got is enough to pay the bills, then how do you retire? Mm. I mean, let alone live comfortably in that retirement. Now, well, because the simple answer to me is you don't unless something actually changes in your life. But this also brings up another question, and that is everyone has a different idea of what a comfortable living means. Now, Phil, I think you've got some statistics on this one, haven't you? Yeah, I do. I do. And the results are interesting. Um, I've got data from the Association of Superannuation Funds of Australia, and the data suggests that a single person needs around $50,000 per annum and a couple close to $70,000 for a comfortable uh, retirement. That's jumped up, hasn't it? I mean, mm. what was it prior to, the, to inflation? And yeah, I think it was oh. down at um, 40 and 64. Uh, that's 40 for a single that's an and 64. In my life. Can you live? I can't live on $50,000 or mm. $70,000 with my wife. Rum it's crazy, and isn't and it? I, By the time you add up all the costs of, um, you know, the power, cars, phones, insurance. everything else, insurance. I'm assuming that figure, oh, sorry, I'm assuming that a figure assumes that you own your own home because mm. there's not a hope in how you could live on that and be paying rent. Because mm. then it's definitely it's it, it's in eating chicken noodles every night. Well, That's more right. than half of that will go to rent these days. Mm. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. If it's yeah, 50. well, a significant amount goes to food at the moment. So yeah. I, I well, don't know that's... about you, but we're, we're probably eating less at the moment because we're on a diet. <laughs> well, I mean, as I said, it's jumped up because I mean, you know, prior to inflation, it wasn't that bad, and the pension is still the main source of income in in Australia for retirement. Now I know there are so many Australians, and I've. Mm. been very vocal about this. The Australians have this idea that superannuation and the pension is their retirement plan. And I was sitting mm. next to a guy having coffee with him who was, you know, high up in one of the big super funds here in Australia. And I said, that's the biggest lie that you can retire on superannuation and a government pension. Mm. He goes, absolutely. Mm. And people still think today the pension and the okay. superannuation is So just to plan. support what you're saying, yep. at the moment when I looked at the data, only 20% of people are actually funding themselves from their superannuation. How so much 20? There's a significant percentage of people that are still on, obviously, on the government pension. Oh, it's about 70, and, 80%. And there's... No, it's actually less than that. Is it? But yeah, it's a lot less than that now. So it's about 40 odd percent oh, now. Is it 40 percent? Solely from their solely. pension, right? And around 20 percent of people actually are, are the main source of income is from their super Yeah, but what, I, what I was suggesting is the majority of people live on super and pension, mm. not super alone or not pension alone. That's what I was meaning. Yeah. The I big, mean, we know that the, pe the superannuation just falls so far short. Of the mark, doesn't it? In terms oh, of it does. And, and they allowed people that. to take out so much during COVID. I think it was up to twenty thousand dollars. They did. COVID. I thought that was stupid. Mm. Mm. But that's what I say to so many young people. I say, if you ever think you're going to retire on your super, forget about it. Do something today. If you don't, mm. you're going to be s out of luck from that point of view. Now, mm. Janine, I know it's common that people don't always retire when they plan to, and and this has a big effect on their ability. to earn that comfortable living. So what does the research actually say? Well, I have some research from Australian Super and it may surprise you. In fact, it's quite alarming. It says that 49% of Australians retire earlier than they plan to due to things like illness, needing to care for someone else, retrenchment, or not being able to find work. Now, I didn't realise myself that it was that high. Well, that's way higher than I thought mm. it would have. Well, I would have thought. Now, Having retirement thrust on you can be very tough to adjust to. Now, I know 
the most common of these that we get in here are tradies, as they tell us, that either their bodies are not really coping or they're seeing the older tradies really, really struggling and, and they don't want to be there. Now, they're all enrolling in our course for the reasons that you've just mentioned, especially anyone in physical work, as it really does put stress on their bodies as they get near the end of their life. Now, if this is you, jump on our website, specifically jump onto the Learning Center where I have an article that's titled Trading for Tradies now, and how you can retire early. Now, in the article, I mentioned what many tradies have shared, which is um, a concern about how they're going to keep working as well as the physical pressure that they have and the mental pressure that they also have. Now, the situation for many tradies and others in physical or high stress jobs such as emergency service workers, etc., is really concerning. And it really is critical that anyone in these areas start to plan early as you never know what might happen tomorrow. Because how often have you heard of a, a nurse or a ambo, I've done my back today at work, mm. Mm. Or, and you can't work? and you're laid up for months on end and you, I hear of tradies or um, contractors with no income protection and mm. stuff like that. And it's like, you feel so sorry for them, don't you? Oh, look, the number of people I've spoken to over the years through email or on the phone um, mm. when they've called, um, it's just unbelievable. And, you know, some people, they were doing, the, they're running their own businesses and all of a sudden, they can't even do. And they're, they're not when they're running their own businesses. They're Johnny on the spot. They're yeah. actually required. You know, they don't have heaps of staff working for them in small mm. business. So and a lot of small business really owners think their business is their superannuation, which mm. is CRAP right. too. You know, and it's like, and they they trust wrong. You know, oh, I'll do it later on. Mm -hmm. mm. And doesn't kind of we hear so many so many stories people so if this is you get onto it today don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow will come and whether your health is there um, is another thing now now before we get into the stocks guys i wanted to ask you guys what why energy mm. well Look, i mean phil and i were talking you were mentioning before that during the reporting season that materials and energy were some of the biggest movers in that space in terms of the the action that was happening. Yes, yeah. Well, the the mm. monthly volumes uh, for February um, materials came in first, well over above everybody else, and energy mm. came in quite strong, um, a distant second from everybody else. So mm. to me, that tells me they're the two markets where most of the action was happening. Now, whether that was buying or selling, it doesn't really matter. It just means that there are people participating in those two sectors. And you know, you've mm. you've spoken a lot about you know um, Buffett getting into the energy sector and and, and um, that you, you like it as well, so. Except, except yeah, look, nuclear energy, she hates that. I don't know. Well, I, know look, I mean, there's so many areas in energy. We created a YouTube little short for you. Yep, there, <laughs> as I'll say, I'll just repeat this one. There are so many en areas in energy. So you've got oil, gas. Coal. You've got coal. Wind, solar. Oh, nuclear. You, the renewables. Yeah. Yeah. Cows, methane. Mm. Oh, we don't want to talk All about that, that one. <laughs> um, yeah, watch, watch that, uh, what's that program on Netflix? You Are What You Eat? You are oh, like that's you a eat. big eye-opener. No, yep. I like the one called Speaking Seaspiracy. Yeah, that was great. Mm. It's an eye-opener. Anyway, getting back to the energy yes. side of it. Um, in terms of the oil and gas, we know that's still mm. going to be around for some time. And with wars going on around the world and all that um, well, disruption. Natural gas. I mean, I can't believe... I mean, mm. the Victorian government's trying to... is From 1 July, I think, is you're not allowed to connect natural gas to your, to your houses, the new oh, builds. Yeah. And I think, how stupid is that? Mm. You know, we've got bucket loads of this stuff, you know, and if you do that, then energy costs are going to go up. Everybody's got to in install electricity for everything, and we can't produce enough electricity now in Victoria with this. Now, with now this is nothing new. Do you know when you go to the supermarket and you buy fruit and veggies? Have you ever seen the stuff that gets I, exported you, you versus the that stuff that. that we eat? <laughs> you know, yep. some of the apples are like, you know, they're massive and they look perfect compared to the yeah. ones that we get, for example. So yeah. it's the same sort of thing as shipping it offshore actually can be more lucrative than bringing it home locally, especially if government starts Not making energy. all sorts we have of restrictions. To, we have to control our own energy. Mm. We have to control our own essential services oil. We're, we're stuffed as an economy. Mm. That's why the US is bringing stuff more back on shore because COVID has taught us one thing. We cannot be a world economy. We cannot rely on other countries to supply our communication. We can't rely on to supply our energy um, or our health. Well, I was looking at a graph and I'm, I'm really yeah. surprised at the 
the amount of like coal, mm. um, gas, oil that we're still heavily reliant on, mm. even with this shift to, you know, we're supposed to be heading to net zero. Solar is still a yeah, really small part of it, even though net zero is an impossibility you know, for Australia. You just look at this graph and you think, mm. what are they doing? Uh, it just doesn't add no. up. Mm. We need we need some of these fossil fuels for a long time anyway. But okay. It is time to go to the charts, guys. So how about we get into the stocks because they want to see the stocks. So okay. how about you start it off, Phil? All right. Otherwise, well, we'll be on our soapbox for another yeah, half an hour. I was figuring that. But uh, look, uh, on, on, on the screen now is the energy watch list, which we have up. And I guess we'll start it off there. Um, we've got uh, uh, quite a few in the energy watch list. Now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start us off with the... Do you want to start with the best or the worst, Janine? Oh, what? come on. Go to the green. Okay. Go to the worst. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the green now we've got AUH Aus China Holdings, which an interesting um, choice being up there at number one. Yeah, look, there's lots of interesting companies there. And I noticed the market caps of a, of a lot of these ones that have done really well just recently are really small and probably on the more speculative side of things. Mm. So that's an interesting point. Now, if you go to the other end, what's at the other end? So we've got what sort of market cap still we've got more the you know smaller Quite a small market companies cap now. so the big ones obviously are in the middle so that's interesting in itself in the fact that the biggest swings are on the the the, the um you know the smaller companies well it makes sense you know mm. we, we often see that stocks under a dollar uh, and i, I yeah. assume a lot of those stocks there would be the lower price stocks um probably more illiquid as well and you're going to see that that volatile price action much more than these higher market cap stocks. But I mean, look, we've got some of the higher market cap ones up here. and You can't go past Woodside Santos really well. Ampol yeah. has been, you know, really questionable because it was approaching these really strong resistance levels, but it's actually gone out of the blocks and it's done really well. So then we've got coal stocks up there, Yan Coal, Whitehaven Coal. Um, we've got Viva Energy in there, which I'm um, just trying to remember Viva Energy. That's one of the... Um, um, ones I don't like, isn't it? It, it is. And it, look, how about we get into some, some charts? Huh? Janine doesn't like a lot of stocks. <laughs> don't worry, I put a few in there that she's you guys just, like. She's put a good number in today. Sh should we get into the first one and have a look at some stocks you yeah, do like? Yeah, let's do that. How about we do that? We've got um, up on your screen is Meridian Energy, MEZ. Now, this is the first one. Janine, I'm going to let you take charge here because yeah, you Meridian chose these Energy, ones. I think this is one of the, um, the alternative um, you know, sources of energy stocks, the renewables. Um, okay. It actually looks really interesting, but I've been waiting for so long for this thing to take off and look, <laughs> you know, just a, it seems like the donkey rather than the horse that, um, that I was expecting. So it's really struggled. So this high here is actually July 2023. It's only managed to just get through that now. I'd like to see a bit of a pullback on it now, given that it has been so slow and then to push back up through around the $6 mark. So yeah, that's look what I'm watching at the moment. Yeah, I, I tend to agree, but to me, what really stands out, like a, uh, I'm not going to say it's the, the, the word, but strong resistance and support, I mean, isn't it? No swear words. <laughs> no okay. swear words, yes. We're yes, not Joe we're Rogan here. Yeah. He can say whatever he likes. <laughs> yeah. He drops F bomb on everything he on does, YouTube. And he never gets banned. And he never gets banned. How's mm. that? But um, I'll like, say one simple word. We're talking about energy stocks. Oh. Energy stocks. But um, look, back to the chart. What, what screams out to me here is that $5 mark. You can see this stock for the best part since 2019, and it's only been around since 2015, mm. it has hovered around that $5 like a bad smell. It's just like it, it needs something, doesn't it, to get it, going? Yeah, and what? I mean, it's not a bad mm. thing. You know, it's not a bad thing. It, it just tells us that, that that $5 mark is where this stock is being um, mm. attracted to the most. And that could just well mean that it could be picking up, uh, getting accumulated by a big institution around these levels. So uh, it is a stock definitely to put on your radar. And I also do like the fact, as you've said, that it's, come and taken out this high of July 2023. It now, just hasn't closed the bubble. Now, it. I'm going to test you. Is this in the energy sector? Do you know? Is it definitely in the energy sector? I'm telling you it is, but do you believe me? I do because <laughs> because I went off your uh, recommendations here, so I hope it is. <laughs> and he's sitting too close. You might punch him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, then. So do you, have you... Did you want to say anything about that one? No, I'm, I'm no? letting you go. You're I'm happy? having a break over here. You so can look, keep going. that's interesting, but I think we just move on for now to the next one. Let's do it. So AGL. Now, is this one in the energy sector? <laughs> it's a trick <laughs> question. I, 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 I think definitely. the second name gives it away. <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's an energy related stock, which is yeah. really interesting, but I couldn't go past it to put it in this list because it is such an interesting stock and particularly where it is. And of course it's in energy area, the energy area but it's actually in the utility sector. 
Well, so that's, that, a, that's a that's a bit of a twist, isn't it? Twister, yeah. No, you've educated <laughs> gotcha. me there a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so Jenny look, likes doing that. She so likes calling us <laughs> out. Like, I just oh. look at the numbers and think, oh, buy, sell. Yeah, yeah I know. That's, what I do. <laughs> that's the best way to be. All right. Um, so if we're looking at this one, it looks great, doesn't it? That line that you've drawn on the chart there. Yes. You've just got to spring out of the blocks. Once it does that, then I think this is going to be a very good and interesting buy. Um, then we've got Woodside after that. Now, Woodside, you can't go past Woodside for being one of the biggest stocks on the market. So we're just waiting to see it come back above this high here now in February 2024 and move on up so that we just may be waiting a little while for that one. Um, but long term, I think we talk about this on most shows because of mm. how important the stock is. But what you've got to be, obviously, you need to be in this one on one of these runs. So in this case, I just want to show you how a trend line could be really important um, for, for just being able to be in the run because it does get so choppy, but then being able to get out. But the situation changed here because this was when they had to actually pay a huge dividend to get investors to stay in it. So I think it was around, I remember watching it, and I think it was around this time here in October 2018. So I would say, you know, when they start, it's not the point... Um, when the dividend is large that you've got to be concerned about. It's at the point when they actually increase it that yeah. you've just sort of got to keep an eye on it. But um, it didn't end up taking off. But look at the angle of that, right, in terms of in compared to the angle of this rise here. So I'm just going to copy this across and then put it underneath this low here. But this more this is more that sort of angle where you're expecting that it could be more sustainable, but it's just hanging on to that point right now. Um, obviously, this rise here after the GFC wasn't sustainable. It was too sharp. Mm. And you can see how it, this is the sort of run you want to be on, the February 2005. You know, we're coming into that sort of time again. I think we will see those sort of rises on these energy stocks, but we've just got to be patient. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, we've spoken about this one for, for so long. It's that $30, yeah. that $30 mark that it gravitates to You're and right. has for such a long time. It's been so important um, and it's still holding above there now. So, um, yeah, look, if you haven't gone back to the other shows, maybe go back and have a look because there's a lot more in depth mm. on Woodside Energy. So, look, next we've got Origin Energy. Now, Origin is an interesting one. Um, Origin... Obviously, there was that failed takeover. Now, the market's actually pricing it at around the, the level of the takeover offer now. Okay. And so it's, it's, it took a long time, obviously, to get to that. See, this sideways move through the takeover, but it, was, but it all fell through. Now, it's given it's holding there, I think that's a really good sign to me. I'm just watching to see... Um, because at the time I came out, I was quite vocal about it and was hoping that it, they wouldn't be taken over. And I gave vocal. a God, there was steam coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I gave it's an like estimate. It's like being late home for dinner. You know what I mean? Well, somebody <laughs> has to, you know, get on their case about these sort of things. You can't be letting the takeover happen if oh, it's I'm not, not a fair value. I'm complaining. I'm just saying. It was like, geez, I'd hate to be late home for dinner with you. <laughs> but we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be oh. allowing these sorts of companies to be taken over anyway. Correct. So that was a big point of it. But looking at how important this level is here, I, I'm quite liking this. And, and maybe you might have to go, they might have to go and listen to my podcast on Origin. They should be able to find it um, in talking yeah, when about. did you do it? It wasn't long ago, was it? I think it was a while ago. Was it? Oh, it was a while ago. So when was I that? Mean, that done was some back awesome in. awesome podcast. In no, the last that was few weeks. 2003. I did that one. Mm. Oh, okay, that That's was still last relevant. year. Mm -hmm. That was so last year. <laughs> <laughs> still <laughs> relevant in terms of it the It is still relevant, but I'm just saying there's been, mm. you've done a, a couple of awesome podcasts in the last couple of weeks. Thank so you. that people do need to look, look out for that. And um, Phil and I did one last Thursday, didn't we? That yeah. goes up probably in the next week or so. That's a wrap I was going to say, I didn't listen to yours, sorry. No, no, it's not up yet, but look up. It's, it's coming. <laughs> it's a ripper. Okay. Um, it's all on presidential cycles and how they affect the Australian oh, right. market and That's the US market and what's going to be happening on our market over the next few years. So mm -hmm. I won't tell you anymore, but it will be up on Talking Mouse shortly. Okay. Free. Lovely. Next stock? Next stock, we have Boss Energy. Now, Ooh. this is a, I mean, if you had gotten in around that, you know, 250, 260 mark, you'd be super happy right now. And, and this stock has really, really trended. I mean, you can see on the monthly chart, it's, it's um, you know, initially started off back in 07 where it, it, it dipped down and kind of hung around that all-time low basing out, giving that real strong accumulation period for the best part of, you know, six, seven years. Now it's on that expansionary phase in its life. It's taken out the all-time high, previous all-time high of November 07 back in uh, September last year. 
And it's, you know, just going and going. I, I, I do think that with the run, the way it's expanded, I would like to see it pull back perhaps to this nice little consolidation area that it has because, you know, we, we've said this a few times, stocks, mm -hmm. they do like to come back and test these levels where the market was accumulating in the past. So if it can come back to somewhere around these levels, I don't mind the stock. Just for now, it is perhaps a little bit uh, stretched and extended. That being said, it is an energy stock. So, I mean, Janine, these stocks can just run on yeah. for longer than we think they can be rational. And look, and look I, yeah, that's a good point. I, I, just, I think it could go to um, $7 or more yeah. looking at it. But what I found interesting about this one is I looked at this little pattern here, this sideways move here back in um, uh, 2020, around about, yeah, it was 2020. Yeah. And then it sort of took off and consolidated and then it took off, but only for a month or so, right? Now it had a consolidation here after the low. It took off another little consolidation, same sort of thing as what it did back here. And then was only up for a month or two, right? Before it went sideways. Now, because of what we know about how patterns form, I'm not expecting it to have this sort of protracted sideways move like we saw before. Um, but look, you know, I'd be, if this pulled back and then started to take off again, I'd be interested in that, even though it's already gone up quite steeply. The simple reason that, you know, there, how many stocks have we looked at over mm. the years where we thought that they were at highs and they just kept going? And they just kept going. And in your, your word is always, if it's on a trend and it's moving up, you can always get in and then just set a, to a decent top, stop top loss. loss. Yeah, if it yeah. smells like a dog and looks like a dog, it's probably mm. a dog. Yeah. I want to talk briefly about whether energy stocks are sort of, I'm not saying on the nose, but, you know, that taboo. You know, we don't talk about the war. Mm. You know, we don't mm. talk about oil. We don't talk about gas. We don't talk about any of these type of things. Because I, I actually read something in the, in the last few days that a lot of brokers are not even talking about energy stocks, especially these ones that aren't renewables, mm. even when you ring up, they won't talk about them. Yeah, because the popular comment is all about renewables, isn't it, at the moment? Well, and that's, and where the, the that's where the government funding is going. So Correct. that's why companies, like, look at BHP. I mean, they're in a position, that you, when I was thinking about BHP the other day, I'm thinking they've positioned themselves to get government funding, haven't they? Well, they like, all do. You know, they all do because it's mm. easy money for them. Well, that's to what get. happened with lithium. The US mm. government said, OK, I'll, I'm going to pay you to, to dig all this stuff out of the ground. And, and the, that market for lithium just went absolutely ballistic. But the, but the problem has been that, you know, while that side of it took off and the resources took off, the prices took off of the, of the commodities, the supply of things like electric cars and what have you, um, people just were not buying them. So They're still not buying them. Mm. <laughs> And like this, just like seriously, all the research, they're not buying them, but they're still mm. building them at the moment. But anyway, I mean, I, I even yeah. met a gentleman not too long ago, that a young guy that's um, headed up a, a new research uh, team. And, and it's kind of the trend that's happening now. They're doing the eco friendly research team. So they're they're producing research to fund managers for stocks that are environmentally friendly or so the theme mm. is uh, particularly in Europe as well, is that they're heading towards these stocks, which to me is a very, very dangerous uh, scenario because you know, as a fund manager, mm -hmm. your your main sole purpose is to try and find stocks that are going to outperform and, and give mm -hmm. the best return you can for your for your shareholders, for your you know, investors. Go work, go broke. Well, yeah, I didn't want to say it, but Next thanks. So what, what, what are you, <laughs> so what are you saying? You're saying that they're putting people into stocks just because that they're supposed to, although it's popular. Well, because it, because this is the trend now. It's um, being seen. It's, it's about being, being seen. Mm. Yeah, it's about because yeah. this company that's is... An, that's another topic for another day, Janine. We need okay. to get on another stock. Otherwise, we won't get them all out for people. Well, we've, we've pretty much covered the four, the five here. So uh, unless Janine five. has something yeah. special up her sleeve... We do you want me to do another one? We might bring one out from the back burner. What do you think? Oh, my goodness. No, I, I we have to move. Well, we, no, we've run out of time because we had such a big discussion anyway. So we <laughs> don't know. We have more stocks in the second half. And we've got right. some real special stuff in the second half for everybody after the break. But that is it for our topic for tonight. Now, let's get into some more questions. If you do want to talk to us about a stock or ask a question, pick up your phone right now and give us a call on 039290-9988. That's 039290-9988. Double nine, double eight, or you can text the number on your screen. Now, whilst we wait for your call, let's get into our next email. Our next email question is from King, who says, "Hello, Dale, Janine, and Philip. 
would like your thoughts on TLG or Telga Group. It looks to be a bit soon, potentially setting up to break its medium-term downtrend after going sideways for a couple of years. It seems to have had a nice deep retracement to back down to previous areas of importance. Thanks as always, Kay. You know, I haven't, we haven't heard from him for ages, have we? No, he we haven't. He used to be a regular. Mm. Mm. That's right. Now, um, now what we, do you reckon? Now, we've talked about Telga, Telga Group. Yeah. Um, what's the next one we were going to talk about? Was it um, Capricorn Metals? No, th this was no that was Telga Group. We haven't it, talked it, about Telga yet. Oh, okay, have we? I no, no, we no. You're getting ahead of yourself. Well, no, no, we, we have covered this. We must have covered this stock just a bit before because we're, we're on the same thing with the trend line. Okay. Oh, okay. So, I mean, we can... We can touch on it again. I, I have so no something's issue. wrong with my script. Is that what you're telling me? I've, so I've something something else interesting about it you've got there. Phil? We could we we have to uh, have a chat to the production guys, <laughs> don't we? But um, look, yeah, uh, I just like you said, Janine. You know, mm. the only thing I just want to pick up is that volume. Mm. That that volume that's coming. That's that's really important. When you're finding volume coming around significant lows, it's it's not to be sneezed at. You really need to take that into consideration. Need, okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, the next question is from Dan, who says, "Good evening. Hope you." are well yes we are he said my name is Daniel and I have a couple of questions in regards to selling a share I have recently bought into biome Australia and have seen the share price increase now the issue I'm having is whether I should sell some of my shares in biome so I can keep my portfolio mix at 20% of the wealth per share now at the moment biome holds 40% of the portfolio the other is to let the share run until it shows a sell signal now the second option is probably the correct one. Just wondering if either strategy is good. Thanks, Dan. Uh, good yeah. question. It's, so a, it's a great question. It's got, he's bought it, it's gone up. It's now 40% of his portfolio. Does he keep it or does he downsell it to bring it back to 20% or less? I, I would always be in the camp of that now that you're already in it, get out on, on a rule um, that giving you a reason to get out and the reason i say that is i, I just did a podcast yesterday with um with zoran a, oh, yeah. a, a friend of the shows and a former student and we were talking about why um traders because he works at, at the broker and so he sees thousands of traders mm. uh, come through and and uh, transact and he said one of the ma major reasons why traders um wh where they get it wrong is he sees that they sell too early and um, you know that old adage of not letting your profits run, cutting them short. And what he's saying here is uh, having to weigh up between doing that just to re rebalance the portfolio versus a stock. If you look at the chart, it is absolutely flying. Yeah. So that's the thing is, so, it's it's, a, it's one of those myths that people hear from the big mm. end of town because the big end of town rebalance back to an index over time. And so they push out that this is how you do it. That's the best way of managing your portfolio. Rebalance back to an index or a weighting, whether it's 10%, 15%, whatever that mm. point is. But that's what the big end of town does. And so they tell you it's okay, so that validates what they do, but they have to do that. Whereas somebody you know, like a trader doesn't have to do that because as you said, it, you, who cares? It's forty percent of your portfolio, but you've got zero risk because there's two types of risks in the market: one systemic risk, and the other one stock specific risk or specific risk, which is the specific risk to each stock. If you're up forty percent, you've got zero risk to that stock of losing your capital, and so that's what you're saying mm. is is and you've got no risk. Mate. Also, though, this stock stay with it. You've got to also take it on a case by case basis Ooh. as well because one, this isn't a liquid stock. Uh -huh. Two. There's no history. Three, you can't back test it. So yeah, you can. <laughs> Anything so, else? <laughs> that Four. means um, I would be coming in here and giving you a little bit of different advice here, which is suggesting that I have no a zero issue with taking some money off the table. You take, can take the capital, capital off, off your table, and right? To play with the market. That's number money. one. I told a trader to do that the other day. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, he's right. It's about let's have a technical type of exit mm -hmm. and for a reason, not the, just sell the, to go the back. Problem, to the problem with this, because there is no history on it, mm. you don't know how, you've got no idea how it could unfold at a peak, right? It's like going on a date with someone, right, Phil? I mean, I'm sure you don't do Please that if you're married, me, but... Uh, You'll get into trouble if he goes <laughs> on a date. And my wife right, you guys so. out there listening, it's like, you know, and you've got no idea how mm. that person's going to be. With this stock, same sort of thing. You don't know how it's going to But it's about setting an exit strategy on that, mm. not just selling to get back to a waiting. Yep, because because but, if, if, if he mm. has... Um, 
done the course, then he would know of certain techniques that would give him an early indication of the trend reversing. Because right, the, right. the, the, the other thing you need to consider, if you do decide to rebalance right now and mm. cut, take money off the table, what if this stock continues to go up another 10, I'm not 20, suggesting rebalance. You, you two guys are sticking together on this, I know. I'm not suggesting rebalance. I'm saying one, take your capital off the table. And I'm saying two, think about how this might unfold. So if we, if we look at, if we go mm. to the daily chart, right, yeah. we don't have anything yet, but I'd be really tempted to one, take my capital, two, look at, um, okay, even if I got a rule on the daily chart, I'd wanna take some profit off there. And then three, let the rest run, because the rest is just free money. Well, we're mm. going to be in disagreement in here, but I think <laughs> you've got some good advice anyway from, from both uh, Phil and Janine and obviously myself as well. So you need to decide what you want to do. But we do have a text, guys. This one's from Daryl. He's asking about HM1. He says, hi, guys. I brought this recently after breaking above a long-term basing pattern. I am looking to trade for the medium term and we'd appreciate your thoughts, Daryl. So if you do want to talk to us, remember ring 03 and give us a call right now. What do you reckon, guys? What a cool name. Hearts what, and Dale Minds. or Daryl? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, two cool names. Um, if we look at this Hearts and Minds investments, I really like that. So just, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, if we look at that sideways move, it looks great, doesn't it? The fact that it's broken out of, the to of those peaks uh, very, very promising uh, move and it's made all these higher highs. And the beautiful thing is, if I just expand that up so you don't have to get your magnifying glasses out, um, you can see that that little low there is a beautiful point at which is potential for setting a stop loss, um, you know, to protect your capital underneath that. So, so far I'm liking it. Um, if I was to look at big picture patterns, which we do in our analysis, then you know then there may be other things to consider in that. So that the stock yes. can always go lower, but at least you're going to know if it takes out that low there. Then obviously, you know, you don't want to be in it. Mm. And from a technical perspective, like you said, there there are a multitude of um, tools you can overlay on this just to really follow the stock nice and closely. You can even draw a trend line here, like I've done, to follow this stock nice and tightly. Um, I also like the fact that there's this, you know, really um, big volume coming near the low. So just as the, the uh, trend began on its way, which is another nice sign that it is pointing in the upward direction. And rightfully what you had mentioned, that bigger um, pattern in the market, I'll touch on it a little bit because you didn't, and more you, you didn't want to get in there too much. <laughs> but basically what, what, what can happen on a stock is anytime a stock can come around, you know, a, a really significant low and test it. Mm -hmm. And if it can hold that level and start to base out and move on up, you're really uh, getting involved in a stock at the earliest possible time, which can provide you with the greatest amount of potential upside, but not just in a risky type of fashion. You, in you, a safe way. In a safe way. So, um, yeah, it's a great stock, great stock choice. It's interesting, isn't it? Because if, if, if we had a looked at this back when this bar was, you know, this red bar here, based on our patterns, I would have been thinking that that was going to take out this low. But then all of a sudden, you get a move that goes above that high, a big, strong bar up, and it's changed the picture. So that's why we have, you know, we teach our students to have a two views, not just one. What if it goes down below there? Then you, your view is going to be this. What if it goes above there? Then your view is but most bullish people, one. Most people who are, just are in the market only in have one, one view. Mm. They mm. want to get into a stock and they immediately think they're going to make a lot of money out of it. Mm. But when we go to the market and buy a stock, we always have two views before we even start. Correct. What if it goes up? What if it goes down? So how do we protect our money? But how do we mm -hmm. make money and make sure we're getting into profit and minimise that risk? So we're buying on confirmation, not speculation. And that's the mm -hmm. power of getting a good education mm -hmm. and why so many do silly things like you're talking oh, yeah. about, you know, yep. with the brokers. Because we do talk to brokers all the time and we hear all the stories of all of these people that have this false sense of reality that they're traders making all these silly mistakes. But... You know, I think we've got a million of them we could talk about, but mm. I better not because Janine's in a feisty mood. She'll start, <laughs> you know, having a punch up with us anyway. But we do have a, another text, and this one is from da David, um, and he's asking about S32 team. He says, hi, team. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on S32. I'm in the trade, but think I went too early. Cheers, David. I can absolutely positively guarantee you, David, you went way too early. Yes. I've been watching this stock for ages, so, yeah. wanting my mm. entry 
and I'm no, no, nowhere near it at the moment, mm. but I'm liking it. Yes. I think he's way too early. But he is. He you is. You can bring up, up the chart. He is. He is. I mean, we've got the monthly and the weekly chart up here. and It's gone up nicely the last couple of weeks. Look, it has. It has. But it, I mean, you know, February has been, it closed on, on it near about its low and it also closed below that previous low of November. So uh, from a technical standpoint, when you're seeing lower highs and lower lows with bars closing lower, it's really telling you that it's not finished. I mean, I mean, for me, I'll give him some indication of where potentially would be a good level to start looking at this stock. We've, if we draw this nice line here and, uh, you know, anything around that $2.30, if it finds some support or even perhaps if the stock can find, and I'll just bring up the horizontal. Even, even where it is, like it may know. find support where it is now. It could, Somewhere around mm. here. Um, Yes, and, and, and to the point more, um, just finding support isn't going to be enough. It, it's going to have to reverse and start showing us with price action that it wants to go higher. So that, again, speaking to that confirmation that you can talking say, there's about. There's zero confirmation that this thing stopped falling. Well, two weeks up or three weeks up is not a confirmation of a move downward finishing because this could be a sucker's rally. For mm. sure. Which is exactly why I'm staying out of it. Yeah. Now, I think it's close mm -hmm. and he may get out of this through just sheer luck um hopefully it's got to stop and uh, you know but it's well, possible the, the it question now will be for, for i'm not trying to be rude to, yeah, to david no, I'm it's just for saying, david yeah. it's more Way about managing yeah. it now it's about managing mm. he's in it mm -hmm. it's up so where's so what will he do now if you're in this right now and you've gone in too early so, what do you do so i'm thinking if if it continues on i mean I see support at around 260 and it's a very loose supporter. It could even go all the way down to $2.30. So uh, depending on his price, if he has a stop loss um, that can cover a fall all the way down to 230, then I'd say, you know, okay, hold well, it. But at least that in from where it is yeah, right now. Yeah, and the I problem mean, the problem with that though, as you know, know, is that if you sort of put a line in the sand and you're saying it's approximately at this level and then it closes below it, mm. you know, what do you do? You're out and then it reverses and goes back mm. up. Well, we can so only you, you can we we can split hairs, can't we? Yeah, about we and, where and, to set and that. The thing is, we can only work with the data presented mm. in front of us today. That's you know, right. things will change tomorrow. They'll change next week. But as of today, it's from where price is now, I see it could fall easily another 22.5%, which is probably mm. well below a, a normal stop if he even has a stop in the first place. So I would say have a good think about how it's going to feel potentially losing another 22% to your, por to your portfolio. And, yeah, um, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say, look, mm -hmm. if you know you bought in at the wrong time, mm -hmm. then you just draw the line in the sand and say, that's all I'm willing to, willing to risk. If it goes below there, I'm out. But often mm -hmm. when we see this, and I'm not saying David's going to do this, but often mm -hmm. when we see somebody buying too early because the stock's gone up for a couple of weeks and it's made 20% or something, yeah. and it falls away, then they don't sell. Mm. And they hang on and they've turned one bad decision and they make a second bad decision by holding mm. on to it for too long. So hopefully that's what you're, what I'm reading between lines is saying, David, make sure you set that line in the sand Correct. and stick to it. Because he may get out of this. It mm. may go up a bit, come down a little bit and find maybe support at the level that it hit and then take off again. So yeah. you may get out of it. Mm. But you don't compound one mistake by having another one. Agreed. That's really yeah. what you're saying. So. Just be careful, David. Decide what you want to do. Um, now, I want to apologise to Jim, who emailed in asking about CMM, and that was the confusion we had on our email. Now, we accidentally mixed up our stocks and never got to analysing CMM. And Jim wanted to know that if he could buy in if it broke above $5. So let's go and have a look at CMM, because that's... Which it's done. Which it's done, and <laughs> we've got it on the chart. And yes. you've got it on the chart. Now, this is, this is interesting, right, because he wants us to tell us whether he, he should buy or not. Yes. Right? So what's the, what are the issues around that for him? I don't know. You're going to tell me. One, he's got no rules. Is one that right? One, he's got no rules. Yeah. What's the other one? He's got no tell rules. Tell me. So he, he, <laughs> what happens to someone who actually wants us to tell him when to buy? What about when yes, it goes and does sell. something? The yeah, other it buys only half of this picture. And, yeah. and unless you understand when and how to sell, that's what most why most traders don't make money consistently. Mm. And this is what we're talking about in our, in our topic, is the strategy is if you want to make consistent money in the market, learn how to sell. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, if you have a stock and you don't know where to sell or how to manage it when you're in profit, and so more the better question, if it's falling away, if you don't know how to manage it, yeah, then you're going to struggle to make money. Yep. So the better question would be, um, you know, I'm mm. looking at this stock to buy. Um, mm. You know, where would I set my stop loss? Wouldn't it really? Then where do I get out if I'm? Well, you know, I mean, I don't I know whether I've told mm. this story, but I was in a room full of accountants years ago, 
And I, you know, I said, who knows how to buy a stock? And they all put their hand up. And I go, who knows how to sell? And they all put their hands down. Yeah. And I said, every one of the, you guys in this room could be emailing me a stock to buy and I'll just start buying them and I'll make money on your recommendations without even knowing what they are because I know how to sell. Mm -hmm. And you could have heard a pin drop in the room because I know yeah. that that's the case. Because anybody can throw a dart at a board and go, or flip a coin, yep, buy, no, don't buy. And if you got your exit strategies right, you'll actually cream the market. And that's why it's so important to get the right education. Because if you don't, you're going to be at the whim Stuck. of the market. Mm. And you're going to be people who make a lot of money and they lose it all again. Yeah. All right. So back yeah. back to look at the so, stock. Yes. Um, Phil, did you want to make a comment? Um, look, I, I yeah. like the fact that he has mentioned $5 as a level because there, there have been quite a few, if we extend this horizontal line. So is it a buy now? Um, it is a buy for me in terms of the price Stink. moving, breaking, uh, giving me um, a signal to start looking for a, a buy um, entry in, in, terms in, of, yep. in terms of techniques that I would have back tested on these stocks. But I wouldn't be just blatantly buying uh, a break of a, a certain price. So I would say, yes, good stock to look at right now. It's done all the right things for you to now try and formulate a strategy on it to, to get in. Um, but just buying above a certain price level for me is not a strategy uh, for one. The fact that it has consolidated really nicely, I mean, technically it, it's formed a, a really nice pattern here. Um, so for it to move up is definitely a, a good sign that it's going to- But it could just as easily pull back, couldn't it? It yeah. could, but the fact mm. that it's consolidated real nice and popped its head on up, that tells me that it, it wants to go high and now break out of this consolidation. Okay, okay. so yeah. from Jim's point of view, Jim, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, for Jim. Make sure you get some rules on it, mate. Um, the guys like the stock, but make sure you've got some rules around it, know why you're buying it. But more importantly, make sure you've got an exit strategy and a stop loss on it. Now we do have the next question, and this one's from Grant. He says, Dear Dale and Janine and Phil, trust you are all doing well. I have a question with regards to Domino's Pizza. Now in light of the news today that Bondi's Pizza's Sydney restaurants have fallen into administration, would this type of information affect your decision to enter a trade with Domino's Pizza? Or would you rely solely on the Domino's chart to understand the market sentiment to the stock? Alternatively, with many reports warning of a slowing world economy and the possible impact of less consumer spending, would this influence your decision to enter a trade regards grant? Well, I think more people, if the world's, we're going into a recession, more people will buy pizza from Domino's. Mm. We tend to go for more junk food when we're in recession, so I think that's a good sign. Yes. Mm. Um, but and, and, ge and generally when, when the uh, news is negative, I tend to like that because yeah. a lot of the times the stock will do the exact opposite. So, I mean, looking at the chart, it's, it hasn't been great for Domino's. Um, this last month, February, has been you know, a, a month that's gone up, closed on the high, but if you look at it compared to January, yeah, it's not- Yeah, reported and got slammed. Yeah, it's not mm. even gone up half of what, what it's fell during during January, mm. so, and you know, looking at the stock from September 2021, which was its all time high, it's had a really, really volatile um, rip on down and creating lower highs, lower lows. There is a bit of support, which I'll mark up uh, around that $40 mark, which the stock's been to in the past around August 17 and March 19. So uh, again, it's one of those scenarios where it's way too early to even I'd think about. Don't follow the story. That's the first thing, and that's don't what the chart's the showing. Just look mm. the charts, not the story. Yeah. Always, that's what you're yeah. saying. Mm. And I mean, you know, Domino's is one of the most successful franchises in the country, um, outside of the gyms. <laughs> mm. It's one of the most f successful, especially pizza franchises. It's the most successful mm. as well. So just look at the chart. Now, that's pretty much what the team is saying. Watch the chart. Don't pretty much look at, listen to the news, uh, and what they might be saying because it could be opportunity. As they say, the sun shines after the dark clouds. Now remember to hit that like button and show your support for our channel by clicking subscribe. You know, it helps others find our channel and so we can help them too. Remember to show your support for us by commenting below this video after the show because we'd love to hear your favorite part. Now remember, give us a big thumbs up as it helps new people discover the channel. So hit that like button now or smash it. That is it for us, for our YouTube viewers. For Talking Well subscribers, stay tuned for the bonus content we promised. Next week in our main topic, we get into 10 top ASX stocks to buy to outstrip interest rates so you can secure 
your financial future. So make sure you join us next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, if you love the show, please show your support for the team that puts in the effort each week into bringing it to you. You can do that by giving them a big thumbs up and by subscribing to our channel. If you are subscribed, you will always know when we put up new content. As always, thank you for joining us. For now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading.